In this video, we're going to discuss ratios and proportions. And this is a topic that some students have a handle on, some don't, some can get a little confusing. So it'll be useful to understand again. Again, it's something we learn in middle school and a little bit in high school. You know, what a ratio is, how we can set it up, how we solve it, and what proportions are and how they relate to ratios. So first, ratios. Ratios. So ratio is basically just, it describes the relationship between two quantities. Now that is very general and vague, but ratios are something we deal with in our everyday life. So for instance, um, the fact that there's 100 pennies to $1 is a ratio. The fact that there are um, three feet to one yard is a ratio, right? These are there's a, there's an equality here. There's an something say there's something saying that a hundred pennies equals a dollar, or for every hundred pennies there is a dollar. Um, now these are units, and they're also ratios. But sometimes you'll have units like or ratios that are not defined in this way. So, for instance, let's say um, if you have a pizza pie, and you say something like for every two slices I eat. John eats three, right? So the ratio between my slices to his slices would be two to three. Or something like, there are two times the number of chocolate cookies to vanilla cookies, to every one vanilla cookie. Right? So for every two vanilla co chocolate cookies you got, you got one vanilla cookie. So that's a two to one ratio. Um, and we can write ratios a lot of ways. We can write it in as a fraction. So if we're dealing with, say, um, pizza again, and I eat one slice for every four that are eaten, my ratio would be one out of four, right? You could also write it with a colon to separate them, one to four. You could also write it in words, as I've been saying before. So, you know, for every one slice I eat, everyone else eats four slices, something like that. Um, you could also uh, use it in words like this, so one to four. And in general, the ratios and SAT problems are going to be given to you. So they're going to tell you, you know, for every three miles I walked, John walked seven miles, or whatever, right? They're going to tell you the ratios you need. Now, how do proportions come in? Well, proportions let us figure out, um, given a particular ratio, how much, how that ratio varies in particular directions, or how much someone actually consumes, or actually does, or actually uses, given that ratio. And this is what I mean. So let's say, let's use this example here. Let's say I eat, so let me write this out. For every two slices I eat, John eats three. So how can we represent this? We can represent this as a fraction like this. Now it's not quite a fraction, it's like a ratio fraction. Um, it's not quite a fraction, so that's why I don't really like using this because it's a little confusing. Um, so I'll put that in parentheses. But often you'll see it as 2 to 3 or 2, 2, 3, like that. All right, so here's our ratio. So for every 2 I eat, John eats 3. Well, let's say that's just the ratio, right? I could have had 10 slices. So let's say I actually had 10 slices. Well, how many slices would John have? Well, this is where we're going to set up a proportion, right? We're going to say, okay, for every 2 slices I eat, John eats 3. That means if I eat 10, then John eats X. Well, there was our proportion, right? This is our proportion. And we generally solve proportions by cross multiplying. So we'll go boop boop. We'll get 2x equals 30. Divide both sides by 2. We get x equals 15. So John ate 15 slices. And note that 10 over 15, if you reduced that, would just be 2 over 3, which is what we would expect, right? We would expect that this would be equal to the ratio of 2 to 3, right? This ratio is going to be the same assuming it follows for these examples, regardless of how many slices I eat, and that's just the way it works. So this is actually the time you're going to use a fraction. Um, so I guess you won't see ratios reported as fractions, but you're going to turn them into fractions when you're doing proportions. Let's do another example. Let's say I'm told that um, 100 tea bags yield eight ounces of tea. I'm taking this question from the SAT study guide, the official study guide by the college board. So 100 tea bags yield eight ounces of tea, and then I want to know what is the weight of tea 
in three bags. Well, I'm just going to do this. Well, I'm going to set up my ratio. My ratio is 10 to 8, right? So I'll set it up here. 100 TB, T bags, for every 8 ounces. Well, what if I got over here? Well, actually, I have three T bags for every X ounces, right? That's what I want to figure out. And now here we go. I just crawl, multiply. I get 100X equals 24. So X equals 0.24. So it would be 0.24 ounces. And that's essentially how you work with ratios and proportions. Um, that's the general idea. The SAT has a little idiosyncratic way of approaching these ratio questions. Uh, on a lot of them, you won't be able to use proportions, or at least it's not as obvious how you use proportions. On some problems, they're also not going to tell you to use a proportion, but they'll say directly proportionate, proportionate, or they'll say varies directly. And we'll talk actually about indirect and direct variation in a later video. But so they're going to use kind of code words for that for when you have to set up a proportion. And also these ratio problems, as we'll see. Um, well, let me actually let me work through one now and just give you an example of what I mean. How you might see it on the SAT, you might see something like, like this on the SAT. Um, in class, this could be the question. There are two boys for each, for every five girls. Now let me come up with something. If there are thirty-five students, how many? are boys. Now this doesn't immediately tell you how to use a proportion because you notice in the other problems before we had something like if we if the question said if there are 14 boys how many girls are there? well we could just had a proportion right it would be you know 2 to 5 as 14 is to x and then we're done. But this one it says we have 35 students so it's kind of changing the changing the proportion that we have to use. Now there's two ways to do this. One way is to use this little box uh, it's taught by various test prep companies. I like it just because it's useful. Helps you keep track of your information. And the way it works is this. You label your columns, boys, girls, and your total. You put your ratio here. Now, you add these up to get the total, seven. So that means for every seven students, you've got two boys and five girls. Down here is the actual total you're dealing with, so it would be 35. And then we would say, okay, well, how many groups of seven does this represent? Well, this represents five groups of seven, right? Seven times five is 35. Well, in that case, we've got to multiply each of these by 5 to keep the ratio in balance. So it would be 10 and 25. And now we have all the information we need. The problem asks how many boys there are. Well, it would be 10. If they asked how many girls there are, it would be 25. If they asked what is the fraction of uh, boys in the class, you would just do 10 over 35, right? 10 over the total. So this gives you a lot of different ways to answer a lot of different questions. Let's look at this one with a ratio now, or proportion. Now, they want to say, Let's set up so we have equals this and this. So we want to know how many boys there are. So up top here, we're going to have boys. But what do they give us? They don't give us girls. They give us here a total. So 35 total. So we want to find the x boys in the 35 total. But we start out with two boys in the ratio. What goes down here? Well, if we remember the rules for proportions, or I I don't think I mentioned them, but if you remember them, whatever is on top, the unit on top, has got to match the unit on the bottom. So if this is total, then this has got to be a total. But what total is it going to be? Well, if you think back to our ratio box, the total we had here was 7, right? That was just the uh, total numbers of boys and girls per, like, per unit. For every, seven boys and for every 7 students, there was 2 boys and 5 girls. So think about it over here. We want to say, OK, for every 7 total students, there's 2 boys. So if we have 35 total students, how many boys are there? There we go. We set up a proportion, cross multiply. We're going to get 70 equals 7x. X equals 10. 10 boys, which is exactly what we got here. So there are many ways to approach these problems. There's, they're kind of idiosyncratic for the SAT, these kinds of questions. You probably won't see them anywhere ever again. Uh, but just be aware they're here. And in later videos, we're going to do a lot more practice problems, and we'll work through some of these ratios.